Good morning! Today we are exploring Boston and doing as much of the Freedom Trail as possible. If you want to see our mini food tour from yesterday, be sure to check that out for part one of our two days here in Boston. Our first stop here on the Freedom Trail is Boston Common, this beautiful park right in the middle of the city. And it was actually where the first European settler came in the 1600s. I just can't even wrap my brain around that. But this is where he lived and eventually he left because there was too many people. If only he could see it now. And each town person paid six pence in order to buy the land from him. And it was used for the community ever since. Behind me is the Massachusetts State House, which is actually currently under construction. So what you see is just a picture that is covering up the scaffolding. You can, however, still see the top, which was originally constructed in wood in the 1700s and has since been replaced with gold. All right, stop number three is the Park Street Church right behind you, which was founded in 1809. And it's very loud bells. This is crazy. This happened four times. This is the Park Street Church just behind me and it was founded in 1809. It was the first landmark people saw when they were coming into Boston. We are at the Granary Burying Grounds, but this site is where Paul Revere, John Hancock, and Samuel Adams are buried. It was established in 1660. Behind me is King's Chapel and it is located on the oldest cemetery here in Boston. old corner bookstore which has gone through many changes over the years but now it's a chipotle and we're pretty hungry so we're gonna grab some food <laughs> to go to 10 of the 16 spots on the Freedom Trail today, but we did have to run home to get ready because we're going to Fenway Park, baby. The bikes didn't work as well as they did at Yankee Stadium. It was a 15 minute bike ride for us, but every single rack near the stadium was full. So we ended up having to park 10 minutes away from the stadium anyways. So I think in the future, we will be better off taking an Uber or just taking the train in. So lesson learned, read the bag policies for every game you go to, even if you went to one an hour or two away on Friday. Because every place has different policies. Our bag's too big, so we're running all over around Try to get this bag checked before we go. So Fenway has a new rule about the size of the bag that you can bring. And even though we have a very small bag, it was too big right off the bat. So we had to come to this mobile locker and it's $10 to store our bag for the game. And we have to come back within a half hour of the game's end to claim our stuff. So At least they have this. Yeah, it's nice that they have this. And now we are onto the game. Very late, but very excited. That was Fenway's like super uber famous green monster. We didn't get tickets this time, but I promise next time we're in town, that's where we're gonna sit. <laughs> Not even close to our seats.
What? Home run. Yeah. Make a lot of people happy if you're right about that. It has been a great game so far here. It's the top of the seventh inning, and we are getting ready for Sweet Caroline, something we've been waiting for since we booked these two. vintage seats here. Look at this! These feel like the original seats. We didn't make it to Cheers, but Halal guys caught our fall and we have some amazing fast food to take home with us. But if you had a great time exploring with us today and going to the Red Sox, please hit the like button because we're exhausted. <laughs> we could use the help. <laughs> and if you want to stamp your passport with us again, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Good night. Oh, ow. Oh, I said that all in one breath. And was the first landmark people saw when they were <laughs> when they were coming into Boston. <laughs> Woo! Red Sox won and
Oh. Why? Why? I'm sorry.